All right, so finally, example four, we have a situation where the only way to go really is to use that crazy formula. So hopefully by now you trust it and you believe in it and you're willing to give it a shot. This is actually kind of an interesting real life situation too. It's about AIDS testing. If we assume that one out of every thousand blood samples um, that these people are testing has HIV antibodies in it, meaning it came from an HIV positive person, um, and then if we assume that, uh, which is pretty much true for this AIDS test called ELISA or ELISA, if we assume that when there are antibodies present, the test will give a positive result 98% of the time, which is a real positive, meaning the test found someone who really has AIDS, who is HIV positive. And we also assume that when there are no antibodies, that means it's the blood came from a person who is not HIV positive, that the test still gives a positive 7% of the time, this is called a false positive. The person doesn't have HIV and yet the test is saying that they do. Okay, so first of all, I'm sure that the best, the best way to set the situation up to understand it is to use a tree diagram like the one you see here. Okay, 99.9% .9 of the time there are no antibodies in the blood and a tenth of a percent of the time, 0.001, there are. When there are antibodies, 90%, 98% of the time a positive result is given and 2% a negative result. Those two have to add to 100%, right? As do these two here. When there are no antibodies, there's a 7% chance that there's a positive result and a 93% chance that there's a negative result. Again, those add to 100%. So this tree diagram has four possibilities. Antibodies positive, antibodies negative, no antibodies positive, and no antibodies negative. And to find the likelihood of each of those, we multiply our way down the tree branches. Okay, so for example, the chance that there's antibodies and a negative result is 0 0.001 times 0 0.02. That gives us 0 0.00002 very unlikely which is good we don't want an HIV positive person to test negative because then they won't know uh, another example the chances that the person has no antibodies and comes up negative 0 0.92907 the product of 0 0.999 and 0.93 again it's good that that's a big number because if people don't have HIV we don't want them to think they do okay uh, one last comment before we actually do the problem. All these probabilities on the right-hand side, these four combined probabilities, add up to one, which is good because that means that we've accounted for all the possibilities and one of these things must happen every time. So the actual question in example four is, how accurate is a positive test? Meaning, what are the chances that if you get a positive result, that you actually have HIV antibodies, you actually have HIV? Okay, and it's surprisingly, it's a surprising result, I think. Um, so the way this works, as we know, is that the probability of antibodies given a positive result must be equal to the probability of antibodies and a positive result divided by the probability of a positive result. That's the conditional probability formula. So, the numerator, the probability that both happen, that is our top branch of our tree diagram, 0 0.00098. The denominator is a little bit complicated because there are two ways you can get a positive result, with antibodies and without. So, that's an or, and so we add. Dividing, we find that uh, the chances of, getting, of having antibodies when you have a positive result are only 0 0.00. 1.4 percent and actually if you were to calculate the chances that you don't have antibodies given a positive result you would get the complement of that 98.6 percent so the moral of this is that if you have to have an AIDS test and you get a positive result that doesn't necessarily mean you have AIDS in fact you should confirm it with a second or even a third test if you get a positive result most of the time it's a false positive but the chances of a false negative, that is, 
you have HIV and the test misses you are very small indeed. They're at 0. 0.0002. All right, one last example with a tree diagram. These examples are hard, and I thought another one would be good. So back to the thing about raining and going to the zoo. Dependent probability, right? Conditional probability. 60% chance of rain, so 40% no rain. The probability that I go to the zoo, given that it rains, is 20% probability that I go to the zoo given that it doesn't not rain 90 percent and I want to know the probability that it rained given that I'm at the zoo why just because I want to know I want to torture you and see if you know how to do this so the formula says probability of rain given zoo is probability of rain and zoo divided by probability of zoo it's just like the last question rain and zoo well that's this top entry here 12 percent probability that I went to the zoo at all again is the sum of two different outcomes rain and zoo and no rain and zoo 12 percent and 36 percent so a total of 48 percent dividing we get a surprising result 25 percent so if you see me at the zoo uh, there's only a 25 percent chance that it rained okay um, all right so these, this last kind that we did in these last two examples, I really don't know of another way to do these sort of with common sense. I really have to do the tree diagram and use the conditional probability formula. So hopefully, uh, after seeing two examples, you know how to do that. If not, please, please, please send me questions and I'll work through some more examples with you. Okay, now it's your favorite time. You get to go practice this on your own. This time, page 667, 1 to 41 odd. Uh, next week we're going to have a test, guys, and this is the last bit of new stuff before that happens. Good luck, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.